Russia has been expanding its influence in Africa in recent years and after the invasion of Ukraine, it will be expecting its newfound allies to provide support or at least remain neutral in international bodies such as the UN. From Libya to Mali, Sudan, the Central African Republic, Mozambique and elsewhere, Russia has been getting more involved often militarily with help fighting rebels or jihadist militants. At the UN Security Council, Kenya, currently a non-permanent member, made its opposition to Russian action in Ukraine very clear. But there have not yet been a loud call from other countries backing Kenya's position. The continental body, the African Union, expressed extreme concern about what was going on, but was mooted in its criticism of Russia. South Africa, which is a partner of Russia and the British group, have, have called on the country to withdraw its forces from Ukraine, but say it is still held out hope for a negotiated solution. On the other hand, Central African Republic President Faustin Achange Taudera has been reported to has been reported as backing Russia's decision to recognize the Ukraine, Ukrainian regions of the next and Luhansk as independent states. By early February, the deputy leader of the Sudanese junta, Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo, led the delegation to Moscow in a, in a sign of closer ties between the two countries. A monument of the Russian military has been put up in the capital of the Central African Republic. One of the clearest examples of how alliances have been shifting in Africa came just a week before Russia's attack on Ukraine, with the ending of French involvement in fighting jihadists in Mali. Mali's Prime Minister Chogwe Maiga confirmed in an interview with France 24 that his country has signed military cooperation agreement with Russia, but he denied that the controversial Russian private military company, the Wagner Group, was involved. This Russian help in Mali, along with a reported offer of the military government in Burkina Faso, fit a pattern over the past five years, where Russia has intensified steps to increase its influence in Africa, both official and, in, both official and informal. As the renewed Russia-Africa engagement gained momentum in 2019 summit in the southern city of Sochi, was attended by delegates from over 50 African countries, including 43 heads of states. President Vladimir Putin addressed the leaders, appealing to the history of backing liberation movements and pledging to boost trade and investments. In the 2019 Sochi summit, do almost all of Africa's heads of states, but there has also been another kind of presence: the upper provision of security to governments in a number of African countries in the form of training, intelligence and equipment, as well as involvement of Russian mercenary Wagner Group in local conflicts. As Mr. Putin indicated, there are historic ties stretching back to the days of the USSR, Russia's predecessor. When Africa was one of several spheres of competition between East and United States, but from the, but from the collapse of the USSR in 1991 to the early part of the last decade, as Russia went through a period of transition, relations with Africa were not top of the agenda. Then regaining superpower status became a foreign policy priority for the Russian president. In 2014, following Russia's annexation of the Ukrainian peninsula of Crimea and the international sanctions which followed, there came a sharp deterioration of in relations with the United States and European Union. Faced with the threat of international isolation, Moscow started the search for new allies. As a result of sanctions, Russia needs to look for new markets for its exports, said Irana Abramova, director of African Institute at Russian National Academy of Science. But it was more than the markets that Russia was after. It also wanted increased global influence. In 2014, it got involved in Syria's civil war, backing President Bashar al-Assad in part to highlight the mess the West was making and show how Russia could fix it. From Syria, it later moved on to the African continent. Ayana Filatora, an historian professor 
of the University of KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. So Russia's key tax in Africa was to discredit Western influence in, in which the same way as in Syria. It wanted to show that Europeans, for example, had failed to contain jihadist threats in the Sahel. It did this through a dual policy in Africa, combining official military instructors working in some countries and informal agencies such as Wagner Group fighting in a number of others. The Central African Republic was the first African country where Russian mercenaries Wagner Group appeared in 2017. Later, they were followed by an official contingent of Russian military consultants. Their aim was to help President Taudari stay in power. Allegations of at atrocity carried out by the mercenary have become common, but Russia has consistently denied that any of the citizens were involved in war crimes or violence against civilians. Russian mercenaries have also been active in Libya, Sudan, Mozambique, and Mali, with varied level of success. In another sign of the growing significance of the continent, Africa has become a key market for Russia's arm industry. Almost half of all the arms coming into Africa come from Russia, according to the country's state arm export agency. The main importer of the main importer are Algeria and Egypt, but there have been new markets in Nigeria, Tanzania, and Cameroon. But there is also a price for closer ties on the diplomatic front. Africa, in total has more than a quarter of the vote at the United Nations General Assembly and can be a powerful collective voice in other international bodies. A 2021 report of perspectives of African-Russia cooperation published by Moscow's Higher School of Economics pointed out that African countries have tended to be neutral when it comes to Russia's action in the past. None of the African countries introduced any sanction against Russia after 2014 in the voting in the United Nations on Ukraine-related issue. Most countries in the continent expressed a neutral position, the report said. With the invasion of Ukraine, if that neutral starts to continue or if it is translated into more vocal support, then Russia's efforts over the past few years could be seen to have paid off.